I'm an archaeologist at Durham University and I use drawing to monitor threats to archaeological sites in the Middle East and we're developing new ways of doing that. So we look at uh, maps of the area which is basically just a way of drawing what you see in the world onto a flat piece of paper and then on top of that we will look at different kinds of archaeological sites and the ways that those are drawn and look at how to monitor the threats to them using both the maps to, and the satellite imagery. So for example, um, that's a map of a site that is in uh, northern Syria, it's called uh, Tel Hawa. And this site here that you see was visited by a field team in the late 1990s. So what we would then do with that is draw it onto a satellite image of the site in the 1960s, which is lovely and blurry, but you can see the big site here, and that site is about 20 metres high. And then draw on all the little sub bits that were identified by the guys when they went out into the field. And you can see what you see around here is a village in the middle, but also lots of fields around it where they're looking at ploughing the site. And then we took it on different images from the period. So this is a sequence of images along the 1960s, some of which are better than others. And then we would look at that and see how it's changed in the modern day on a different image. And by having these boundaries already drawn on in what's called a geographic imaging system, a GIS, we can then start to monitor change and look at the threats to sites. So we can see that the farming's become more intensive and that that site, by drawing the boundary, what looked like a perfectly good site, has actually got a part of it missing. And we do that in lots of different areas. So for example, that's a very big site. It's about 23 metres high. And we drew the boundary around it on a 1960s satellite image and then redrew it and opened it up in just actually Google Earth. And what you suddenly see is that actually there's been quite a lot of damage to this site. They've been able to build a road along the side and this dark shadow here where it shows up is actually a cut into the side of the site. You can see here that actually what used to be the edges of it is now very heavily farmed and all these stripy lines here are actually ploughing, which means there's a very good chance they've actually been bulldozing the edge of the site. And without being able to draw these boundaries onto the site, we wouldn't be able to see this because the only indication we'd have that it used to be a lot bigger is this tiny little lip here where it sticks out and then comes in, which is where they've got the plough right up to the edges of the site. And it's by using drawing this way that we're able to develop methods of working out what the real threats are to the archaeological sites across the Middle East. And that way we can start to develop better protection policies for them once we know what the real problems are. So another example, uh, when we start doing this in urban areas, because we do a lot of work in very rural areas, but this, for example, is the site of um, Ar Raqqa in Syria. And this is a city which, that part of it there, dates right the way back about 5,000 years. It's an incredibly old part of the site. And then later on, the Greeks and the Romans came, and they sort of built two different parts of the city. And then, um, this is the 1960s, what you have up here is a very early palace which dates to what's called the Abbasid era, and that's over a thousand years old. And you can still see it beautifully here in uh, 1967, and this is the outline of the palace, and there's a little road coming down here. And these, are, these lines are where we drew on all of the features the archaeologists had found when they were looking at the site. And then, once again, we opened it up and looked at it in newer drawings and new satellite images, and that picture is that exact same area there. Obviously there's nothing to see except fields. And what was a little bit of the town coming down here in 1967, as you can see it's all of this grey speckling here, as the town's just expanded massively. It's much, much bigger now. And all of these features that were drawn by the archaeologists in the 1980s, quite a lot of them aren't there anymore. In fact, the reason that we've colour-coded it, and again this is one of the great things about drawing all these boundaries in this geographic imaging system, is we can really start to look at the different levels of preservation. So the red bits are the bits that just aren't there anymore. It's all completely destroyed. The yellow bits are the bits that we think might still be there, maybe. Um, particularly this area here, because once you start being able to layer up these drawings, what you can start to do is compare it to the different areas of the city. So this is actually a very poor area of the city right here, and that means they don't have any basements, so they're just built on top of the ground. And that means hopefully that the lower levels of the archaeological site are still there. And that orange bit there is actually one of the only bits that still remains, and that's the original city walls, which is this horseshoe shape here, which date back um, to the very earliest part of the Islamic city. 
But even then, only about two thirds of the walls are still there. That bit, that bit. And uh, that's a little mosque right in the centre. And that's all that's left of the ancient parts of Raqqa. And they've now obviously built big archaeological parks to try and preserve it. So one of the other things we're looking at doing is finding out just how much of the archaeological sites are being damaged by cities across the Middle East. So again, we can start to look at how to preserve them. When we travel to the sites, that's really important because if you haven't seen something in person, quite often it looks quite different on a map and look quite different on a satellite image as well. So the problem that you would find if you don't go there is that when you see what is fundamentally a big three-dimensional object, either from the top down or reduced to a flat map, you don't really know how it appears. So it's actually really important to be able to go somewhere and be able to draw it in the field so that you can then come away and know what you're looking at. The other advantage, of course, of doing that is that you might see a lot more that wasn't there originally, uh, part maybe because it's changed over time, something that you see isn't there anymore and somebody's been there and, and left you that record. But if you don't go there and draw it, you might find that what you actually draw just based on your, your satellite images or your maps is much less accurate. And that's a side project we've got at the moment has been investigating the accuracy of a lot of people who've been going out to try and just draw things based on a picture rather than going there in person. And we're discovering that actually the, there's a very big gap between what you see when you're actually there and what you see uh, without ever having visited it. But obviously once you have visited it, you've got that record that can be shared with everybody because we're all hopefully operating on the same kind of system. I could take that map and scan it and put it into this geographic imaging system. And one of the great techniques within that computer system is that it allows you to overlay uh, different images. So for example, I could click on like that point there, say, where the roads intersect. And then I would go to the, the picture on the satellite image and click on it and say that intersection there is this one here and then the computer would know to line them up on top of each other. And if you do that enough times with enough points, it just overlays the two on top of each other. But the other way to do it is, I mean, for something like this, that's, there's nothing left to overlay. I wouldn't be able to say that road is, is that point because it's completely destroyed. So what we do instead is there's a number of drawing tools within the program and um, we would basically just scan in the map and then click and draw uh, lines, circles, whichever images, uh, whichever tools rather, would be most useful for us to be able to map out the whole thing. And you can draw those either freehand uh, or with little what's called nodes. And each node connects points on a line, kind of like a really complicated join the dots, to be honest. And then if you want to change at any point, you can move your nodes around. And if you've misclicked, you can pull it into different shapes. And that just lets you customise it to the image that you're trying to draw.